we're going to take a look at the conical warp feature today. This video is super quick because the conical warp feature is super easy to use. Hi, I'm Brenda Lambert. I'm a TJC licensed instructor for Silhouette. If you found your way to Silhouette Success, I do hope you're going to join our little community. A little bit later on in the video, I do go over how to use the wet method for applying decals. So if you are unfamiliar with that, be sure to stick around. If everyone is ready, let's do this. Let's start by bringing in our file. Head up to File and Merge. This brings up your downloads and just click on the file that you want to use. Once your design is on the mat, you're ready to get started. The first thing we are going to do is duplicate this because I know I want this image on two separate items. We'll start with a candle so we can use the conical warp feature first. Select your image and get your sizing correct before you start. I know my candle is three inches tall, but I'm going to go ahead and put in 2.75 just so that there is a little bit of wiggle room. Let's open up our warp panel and head to the third tab. You will need Designer Edition Plus or higher in order to use this feature. Make sure that your element is selected and then click on Conical Warp Selected Shapes. That brings up this outline to give you an idea of what the final warp is going to look like. And that is not right, obviously because we need to come down here and put our measurements in for the candle. The top of my candle measures 8.75, the bottom measures 8 inches, and the height on the candle is 3 inches. You can click Apply, that outline goes away, and you're left with your candle label. You can see that the top and bottom are slightly rounded, and the sides are slanted. So we have taken a perfect rectangle and turned it into a tapered label. That was pretty easy to be honest. Now we can open up our page setup panel, turn on our registration marks. We can print this out on a sticker paper and it will be good to go. Setup for the glass can is super simple as well. My glass can measures 8.75 by five inches tall. However, if I put those measurements in here, my image is going to become distorted. That's okay because it's on a white background. It doesn't have to wrap all the way around. I'm just interested in sublimating the main image onto the glass anyway. So we can enter five in for the height. Right click, flip horizontally, and this will be good to go as well. I use the Epson EcoTank 2720 to handle my regular printing jobs. It did print the bottom line on this. I'm hoping that it will cut it out. You want to make sure to set your cut lines to no color before you print. Let's go ahead and close the lid to get the best possible reading and click send. Once it's done reading the marks, you can open the lid to see what's going on in there. As always, you want to check the cut. That looks great. Let's unload the mat. When applying labels like this, I like to use the wet method. I have just a little bit of water with a dab of soap in there. You don't want to be too dramatic with the soap. Just a little bit will do. Wet down the entire surface with that. Then you can take your label and set it on there, lift it up and reposition it to get it just right. It does not stick completely when it's wet. You do want to make sure not to get the image itself wet. Once it's on there and straight, you can just take and smush the soapy water out. Make sure to dry your fingers off in between. Now the label is applied, it's straight and good to go. Let's move on to the glass can now. If this were a full tumbler wrap, I would carefully trim the print to size. 
However, we only want the image transferred, so we do not have to be that careful. We just have to make sure that it's going to have a nice airtight fit. I'm going to secure the design with three pieces of heat resistant tape, then go around it with painter's tape to make sure that all of the air bubbles have been squished out. This applies just the right amount of pressure. In my opinion, it works perfectly every time. Toss that in the air fryer for seven minutes at 395 degrees. I do flip it once in the middle, right around the four minute mark. You want to be sure to wear your heat resistant gloves when pulling this out of the oven. Sublimation gets extremely hot. 